Hello guys and welcome again to the JavaFX8 tutorial and today's video will be about the table view okay so let's go to the first slide okay so here's the example that we're going to create in this video we're going to explain how to create it okay so we are going to review how to use and create a table view so in order to create a table view we need to use the table view class we need to specify the kind of uh, or the type of information that this table view will display. Uh, in this case, we're using uh, a class okay, what that we have created. Uh, the name is Soccer Team. And we are going to display information of uh, objects that are uh, that comes from Soccer Team class. Okay, so then we need to use observable list. And again, this observable list will contain Soccer Team uh, objects. And we are going to store these objects in an observable array list. If you really want to get more details about this, you can uh, take a look at the previous video about the collections and uh, the list view. Okay. Now then uh, the table view has another method which is set items. And this method uh, we are going to pass the observable list. In order to display the information in this uh, this control, and then we need to define the columns of this table view. The table view has columns and cells, and we need to define the columns. And in order to do that, we use the table column class, and we can set the header and the type of um, data that it will dis uh, that these columns will display. Okay, so then we have uh, another method called set cell value factory, which will bind um, the, the information uh, or the properties in this inside this class to the columns. Okay, so we can take we can look the information inside each cell inside the columns. Okay, so. And well, then we have these two lines of code. And these two lines of code, uh, of code are the ones that add the columns to the table view. Okay, so let's go to NetBeans. Okay, so here's the code that I'm using, and I'm going to show you the final result. You can take a look. Um, well, we are using uh, text nodes here in this header, so for Teams table view. We're using text fields and buttons, and also more text nodes. Okay, so we're gonna focus on the table view. So we're gonna add, we're going to replace and remove elements of this table view. And we're gonna use these text fields in order to execute these actions. Okay, so, uh, well, let's go to the code. And here is the important, the important part that I wanna show you how to create the table view. First of all, we need the table view class and we need to specify the class, which is this one software team. This is a a class, a very simple class that I created and I want to show you here okay, it's a class that will contain only uh, strings, uh, properties with uh, with a string uh, data and we have four, four uh, string properties, name, country, state and website and when we define a constructor which will you know uh, initialize this, uh, these values for each object and also we have get methods and set methods for this um, this class. Okay, you can create any class that you want with the uh, with the logic and complexity that you want in order to manage this um, this information. Okay, this is simple. In order to explain uh, how to use this control, the table views. Okay, so and once we have created this uh, table view. We need to create observable list that will contain the objects of this uh, uh, for this table view. We use observable list, we which are which is receiving soccer team objects, and we also create observable array list which will contain an array of uh, soccer team objects. Okay, so we use the constructor and then we pass information inside this constru constructor. So we have five objects right now inside of this array list okay so any change or modification to the uh, table view will be made through the observable list okay we need to modify the observable list and it will automatically 
uh, update the table view uh, content. Okay, that's the advantage of the observable list. Okay, so then we have the table view and we have the set items me uh, method. And inside this uh, method, we pass the observable list that we have created. Okay, and then we are going to create the columns. So we have four columns team name, country, stadium, website, and inside and inside of this header club information information which is a column we have placed these three other columns okay so we're gonna learn how to do it, do this as well so first we're going to create this header club information this will be empty this will not show anything it will only contain the other columns so we need to use the class table column Okay, and inside its, its constructor we can define the header, the text in the header, which is club information. And then we're going to define the three columns that are below this one. Okay, team name, country, and statement. We do it the same way, but in this case, because we are uh, displaying um, information inside of it, we need to define the class. Okay, the class that it will... Uh, that this uh, table view is displaying and the type and then the type of data that this column will display in this case strings okay so this column will display only strings and then we pass in the constructor the header which is the text that you can see in the, here in the header okay then with the column that we just created we use the method set cell value factory which will uh, Find the um, uh, the values of inside the cells. Okay, so inside of it, we need to pass a new instance of this property value factory. Okay, this class which will bind the property in the class with the cell or with the column. Okay, and then we need to specify the class and then the type of data that it will displace again, uh, which is strings, and we need to pass inside this constructor, this property value factory constructor, we need to pass the name of the property inside the class. This name, I'm going to show you right now, is this one inside the class, is the same as the name of the property here. Okay, so we are going to use these four property names inside that uh, this constructor of the class property value factory okay and that's the way we're creating the other columns we have here uh, column country which is um, which we just bind to the country property of the class the stadium uh, column okay again which we are binding here to the stadium property inside the class and the same with the website column and the website property. Okay, so those are our four columns that we can see here with data. And in order to place these three columns inside this one, we use that column, clo uh, column club information. We use the get columns here a method and then the add all method. And inside of it, we add the three columns. Okay. Then we use the table view uh, object. We use the get columns as well, and then with the add all method, we pass that column with the which contain the other three columns here, and then the other the remaining column, which is this one here that is a part. Okay, so that's how you build a, a table view and how you bind the information in your classes to the columns inside your table view. Okay, so now let's review the buttons here. If I want to add information here, um, I need, well in this case, this is my, my logic, and I need to add here uh, information inside these fields. Okay, I'm going to add some information, and then I'm going to press the button, add the add button. And I'm gonna I'm adding to the observable list this 
new object with this information and it will it has been added to the end of the list okay so inside of this uh, set on action of this button the important line is this one here and again you already know this one we are re we already reviewed this in the last video we use the observable list and then the add method and in this case we're adding a new instance of uh, of the soccer team class when we are using the constructor new soccer team and we are passing the information inside the uh, the text fields okay so that's how we add a new row in the table view then we have the replace button which is this one here and in order to replace information we use the set method of the observable list okay so we need to select in this case select one of these um, uh, rows in the table view and for example we can uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing this this way I'm adding the new information in the in the text fields okay if, and for example if we, pr we press replace you will see that the information has been updated okay so this is how I am doing this okay so this is the set on action and inside of it the important part is this one here we have the observable list and we're using the set method and inside the set method we need to pass the index of the or the position of the selected item and the good news here is that the table view uh, has a get select a selection model the same as the selection model in the list view and we can get the selected index of the, the item that has been selected or the selected items as well to get the, the values in this case this uh, function is returning the position of the selected item in the, in the table view and then we are passing the new uh, or the replacing object okay uh, this new object with the new information okay so we are updating objects uh, inside the, the observable list okay in order to see this uh, changes in the in the table view okay, where we just replace this uh, the, the the object that were before here that was before here uh, with a new object with this new information and we're keeping the information that is the same okay that's what we are doing and then we can remove we can remove data by pressing the remove button which is this one here and we use um, a remove method of the observable list and we, we just need to pass in this case with the selection model we can get the selected item and it will return the object that is in that position or that, or, or that was selected in the table view and we just remove this object okay and well as you can see um, this is very useful in order to display um, information inside classes inside objects because we can display multiple uh, fields in just a table view and manipulate them okay the way we we want so this is how uh, table view works i hope you find it useful and see you next time Thank you for watching this video guys and please don't miss the next one because we're going to review how to use the progress bar. Okay, so please like, subscribe and share and see you next time.